he was just standing. Well, I was going and I was going to start going around and like, you know, make it like a fortress. And he was just staring at it. And then he was just like, whatever, started running down the street. Um, <laughs> last night <laughs> after we recorded, like, oh, yeah, you go. <laughs> I was like, see a kid. He's going to go sketching on some cars, you know, in the snow. On this episode, we drink and review our first homebrews of 2021. This is episode 45 of The Malting Hour. What's the hats on the hops? Got yeast that's beast. This is The Malting Hour where we talk about our drink and tell you what we think every other week. And if we get drunk, well, we might slur our speech. Got the gift of gab, the friends you wish you had. Join us for a drink, join us for a laugh. Time is never wasted, where you getting wasted? The Malting Hour here, people, people take your places. People, people take your places. Welcome to another episode of the Malting Hour. Uh, we are here at part two of our first brews of 2021. I am uh, Tony Golick, and I am one of the hosts, always joined with Brandon Winninger. And uh, most of the time, Clark Fetridge. Ah, great, good. All three of us are here. Um, if you're following us on social media, you will know that there was a little bit of a technical difficulty that we had with the uh, uh, episode. So we're doing it again, and this isn't the first time Brandon and I have had to do it again. Clark, have you been? Have you done an episode with us where we've had to do it twice? No, this is my first double go around. Uh, but I do remember the one you guys did. At least we don't. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't remember that episode because that was a lot of uh, a lot of beer and, and whiskey we had to drink twice. Oh shucks! And the funny thing was when but we that did was, that, same- that was over like the same day. I mean, you you realized it was, back to back. Yes. It was messed up, yes. and then you just kept we went right back into it. <laughs> yes, we we basically just restarted the episode and and went right back into it. And uh, yeah, it was, and we, we we thought we were so like on top of it. We're like, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna do it early in the day. It was like a Sunday morning. Uh, St. Patrick's Day episode. We'll record it. We can put it out Monday. It's going to be great. And, uh, you know, with this way, we won't be, you know, drinking too much <laughs> and we can just get, you know, on with our day. <clears throat> that was not the case. So, well, thank you for giving me 24 hours to recuperate from not only drinking, <clears throat> but from shoveling and, and, you know, yeah, yeah, all that yeah. good uh, snowstorm stuff. So, yeah. Uh, what did we end up with? Like, did we end up with a foot of snow? Is that what we ended up getting? We more of that? And I don't know. Some places I know, I think the around, I think in front of our house, we had to have at least there's over nine inches. Um, The alley was bad. So um, I shoveled out our garage last night after we had recorded the first episode, uh, the first round of this episode. And I was like, all right, I'll be good. And I got stuck in the alley this morning when I had Benjamin in the back of the car was taking Mm. him to daycare. Um, So that sucked. And then luckily two neighbors, I had called, uh, called the wife and she was running down with a shovel, but a bunch of neighbors that were living down the block came out and started trying to dig me out. So, um, finally we got it. It took about 40 minutes before I got wow. my car dug out. So yeah. Jeez. Yeah. I was lucky enough to have good neighbors where we were all constantly working over the weekend to clear paths and, and dig out cars. And I, even with uh, my daughter, her car, which is a 1999 uh, Nissan Sentra, uh, was able to get out and, and go today. So we were all able to, to get out and go, which is nice. Is that the, is that the white car that was in your photo? I'm like, whose car is that? <laughs> yeah, that's hers. She's ready to go with a 1999 Nissan Sentra. Hey, you know what? It's better than nothing. It, it is, especially, really- yeah, when you need to get back and forth to work. Um, I was telling somebody yesterday when I got, uh, when we were shoveling out front, some woman, woman was in a Ford Fiesta trying to make a turn onto our street and her wheels just kept spinning and spinning and spinning. So I was over there and she's like, you know, I used to have a Mustang and I never remember getting stuck in the snow. And I said, funny that you say that I had a Toyota Corolla and I never remember getting stuck in the snow until I bought a Jeep. And that's the first time I ever got stuck in snow. Uh, I blame Obama. Yeah. Got to be him. Good thanks, point. Obama. I wish you had a soundbite of that, of someone saying thanks, Obama, because then we could have just put that in there. We Next time. Know. Yeah. Thanks. Well, does somebody but, have a soundbite of him actually saying you're welcome? So <laughs> when people say that, you can use his voice saying you're I mean, I'm sure on TV or something, <laughs> he said, yeah, you're there welcome. has to be. A, yeah, there has to be. Uh, Brandon, you got to get We it. will find one. We'll yeah, we'll, we'll work one. on that. <laughs> Because then we're gonna we're gonna just we'll just casually throw in thanks Obama when something bad happens uh, on the show. You're welcome. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll just use that. Uh, but this isn't the 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 snow plowing hour. 
<laughs> this is this is the melting hour. And uh, as you guys know, last week we discussed um, our first uh, home brews of 2021. Uh, it turns out that all three of us happened to brew beers um, without really aiming to have it for the show. Uh, now, as I said, there was technical difficulty, so we did drink the beers yesterday. Um, Brandon, you have a little bit of, of mine left. I have mine left clark do you have any of yours you're, you're almost oh i drank beer. all of it last night yeah. oops yeah <laughs> we'll, we'll get we'll get into why you only have so much of it and why it's all gone um but yeah so we did we all did three different beers three different styles uh clark revisited a beer that he did fudgy dust which is uh his um zombie dust clone uh more of an ipa style brandon you did a take on um a recipe that you and i came up with for the very first or after the very first episode of belgian triple um and did your own tweaks to it that we discussed last week but that is still fermenting correct um it is actually i I believe it is now finished so yesterday i checked on it and i didn't see much activity um so like i said like tomorrow or yesterday is the day uh, i'm kind of marking it as um done so so you're going to let it sit, it, though, for another week. Yeah, though, right? so I'm going to let it sit for probably about another week. Um, I was actually, like, just kind of, I have two kegs that I bought off somebody a while ago. I'm um, just kind of prepping those and getting those oh, ready. good. I can get that other keg back then. Yes. I'm gonna or need you, you can, to borrow, drop those you can off. borrow one of these. Perfect. But I'm going to need you to drop those off because I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> no, that's good. You better not be. <laughs> Ooh, a little bit of a scare right now. Got to get tested. Um, yeah, so we're excited about uh, your beer. And then the beer that I did was the first time I've tried uh, to do the style, which was uh, a Goza with uh, lime juice, which is basically I decided to do I wanted to do a Goza. But the reason why I did the lime Goza was because I had off colors uh, beer for tacos the last day before I started doing dry January or, or dryish January. And I loved it so much that that was what I um, went uh, for. So nice. when we first did this episode, we uh, talked about Clark's beer and it's still fresh in my mind. Uh, so I still, I still can discuss what I liked about it. What I absolutely despised about it. I have brought the rating down probably about four stars. Uh, and I only have a four star uh, rating. Uh, scale for this but uh i'm gonna be as honest as possible um it kind of tasted like mud and i hate yeah well i did tell you guys i did tell you guys to be honest i wanted positive reviews negative i wanted all your thoughts on it so this is this is where we didn't get into this side of of your thoughts on the beer Mm -hmm. yesterday so it's nice to have that come out on the episode that everyone else will actually hear the audience will hear so thank you yeah it was it was awful because we're sober now yeah, now exactly. <laughs> yes, we're we're sober now. <clears throat> um, anyways, so Clark, you actually had an issue with uh, your keg before. Uh, that I know it's hard to rehash again. Uh, oh, I'll rehash it now. Uh, what what issues spent, did you have with it? Yeah, no, we had a foam issue. We had a foamy pour issue coming from my kegerator, and uh, I haven't had huge issues with it. I've had the kegerator for almost a year now, about ten months. Pour has never been, you know, some cakes, I think more commercial, the commercial cake I got, an anti-hero um, barrel I got, poured pretty darn well. Uh, homebrew has been perfectly fine, no issues. Occasionally here and there, especially in the summer when things got a little humid, the lines, you know, were different temperatures coming out and inside the kegerator. But, you know, all in all, pretty, pretty good. Uh, started pouring some beers for you guys, your flip tops. As Brandon, and, uh, that asshole, is now pouring. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Yeah, who's the drunk Maybe he one is now? drunk. Yeah. yeah. He's yeah. like, hey, I saved these, but I've been drinking bourbon all day. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's funny, Brandon. Sounds you still had some me. left. Uh, yeah. So when you were. But no, I went, it, to, I went you know. to fill your flip tops. And uh, boy, Tony, well, you, you saw that, or both mm-hmm. of you saw that you got maybe 40% of the bottle filled because the rest yeah. of it, when I was pouring it, was all foam. Well, and, and when I when I opened the bottle, it gave a solid, like, pop that's I right remember brandon yeah, so yesterday <laughs> yeah when you opened it you even took a look at the ceiling because <laughs> i was like what <laughs> it's like a glitter fun. bomb it's a it's a foam bomb that i got What's you guys. It like you almost that's expect all. i mean it, it's kind of like the reaction if you have like champagne or something and like yeah. when that pops it's like all right what happened uh um, well, yeah 
And, and to be yeah. clear, the the actual beer itself that was in the flip top you gave us was like perfectly carbonated. There was just a lot. There was our, there's a lot of pressure in it, but uh, it was uh, perfectly carbonated, had a nice head on it, and it smelled uh, beautiful. Very good. Yeah, and I think long story short, I'm not going to get into the you know three hours I spent trying to f- fix this issue because no, we got time. We have time. Oh, fine. Okay, so a uh, minute one. What no, happened, no, no. Just, what just had happened was. Uh, <laughs> Long story short, I think I, I think the problem was par- at least part of the problem was that the actual liquid temperature of the beer was too cold, so it was coming out of the keg and then shooting through these um, warmer uh, lines. The lines that were a couple five degrees warmer, and and I think five degrees when you're pouring beer makes a big difference. Sure. Um, I, I I literally opened up the keg and put a thermometer in there, and it said it was at about 34 degrees when I had set the fridge to 38. Um, so clearly that the beer was getting colder than the fridge said it, the air temperature in the fridge was getting. So I upped the temp in the, in the fridge. And then, uh, about 16, 18 hours later, I was pouring a lot better. It still wasn't perfect, but I was getting, you know, three quarter beer to 25% foam. So I wonder, I wonder if it has anything to do with the hundreds of cans surrounding <clears throat> your actual keg. Well, what I did was, since you saw on Saturday, I did go through some of those to clear that out. Oh, <laughs> so nice. Hopefully that yeah, by, drink, by drinking them? Yeah. Oh. Yes, exactly. No, I, I think a lot of it was the temperature, and I think, I don't know, maybe something with the beer was going on because it was young or, you know, it had only been in the keg for six days. Maybe it was a tiny bit overcarbonated. Could have well, been a lot the, of small issues. Yeah, I was going to say, one of the things that we, we, we brought up yesterday was that I had an issue before with a beer uh, because of hot particles getting stuck um, That's right. in, in the output and the pop, it had to be cleared and I had to do, you know, clean it numerous times. Uh, it was for my, my, my birthday party last year that I was like clearing this out and it was like an hour before people were going to come here and there's just beer spraying. It was a lot of fun until finally I was able to take the pop it out. Like we did for you, Brandon, of just letting. Yeah. So <laughs> question on that though, did you have, uh, what was it kegged in? Like what size keg in a five, five gallon, gallon or. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I'd also remember I, I had decided, Oh, there's not enough hop aroma. I'll just, and this was the day before throw some hops into the keg. Don't yeah. do that. Don't well, no, was also, yeah. like, I'd have to Clark. What, what size keg would did you use? Oh, sorry. It was a, just a two and a half gallon. So it, it's a small one that, Oh, okay. um, held it. But, but as, as we discussed last night, you know, I did dry hop loose. I didn't use a hop bag or a, a, uh, cylinder screen cylinder. Thank you. Um, so who knows? It could have been, I think it was probably a lot of things, mostly the temperature. And I think my lines are a few feet shorter than what's, you know, a perfect setup. So someday when I have time and I want to focus on it, I'll probably add a few feet to the lines because that apparently makes a huge difference. Yeah, uh, I actually, think my lines are only about five feet, and they say oh. ten feet's probably. Yeah, uh, if I you forget, can, I forget. Uh, it was I was actually recently listening to uh, the Brewlosophy podcast, and they were saying I forget how long it was, but I remember basing it off of that for my lines that the actual length of the ho- like the hose of the line has a hundred like. It's almost a lot of the reasons why you get foamy beer. If like your pressure's fine and your beer's not overcarbonated, you know uh, the line, the length of the line has a lot to do with it because that pressure pushing it through, if it's only a short amount, is not going to be. It's just going to be foam, straight foam. But I think it might have been like you said, temperature, or there could have been hop particulate in there um, that was preventing it because you've poured beers before that that weren't really you didn't have any issues like that's issues. What, that's why i don't think it was the length of the line because yeah. you would have seen yeah. this in some capacity before true um i would be curious like if you took that keg and kind of looked in there to see if there was anything any particles in the poppet you know if you go to you know, take it out and clean it just see if there's anything in there but um regardless of that i mean the beer turned out phenomenal you know the the small amount that i have left uh still Still got that same flavor. So the reason I have some left is so I filled up a second um, taster that I was kind of sipping on um, with the rest of the beer last night. And then when it wouldn't record or when I f- found out that we had some issues and the audio wasn't coming Don't through. Don't tell them what I, happened. I, I literally you needed ran, a bigger beer. <laughs> I literally ran and I like I took it and I put it back in the bottle. As soon as Tony said, he's like, we might have to re-record. I threw it back in the bottle. Oh. And I was like, I'm going to save that just in case I need it. So Smart. um that's why I had some. And then I had, um, I had only, um, 
drink a, uh, like half of the one Tony brought. I gave some to uh, Becca last night too, and she actually enjoyed it. So. Yeah, yeah. So no, it, that, that was that was a smart smart move, Brandon. Sorry, what were you gonna say, Clark? No, no. I think as as we discussed uh, yesterday, I think um, it, I definitely like this beer. I want to do it again. I'm gonna do five gallons just because the two and a half went way too quickly, as I wasted plenty on it trying to fix the foam, but. Um, uh, we, we discussed the hydrometer being used. So I did get a final ABV of 6.8, which was, uh, about one, one point, one percentage higher than it was supposed to be. Uh, <laughs> I think very because funny of the, to me that the, yeah, fact the that extra, <laughs> yeah, which, which, <laughs> which I think, I think also like going back, like if you, from here on out, it would nice, it'd be nice to see your next two batches of whatever beer you brew to find out exactly what your ABV is, because, if all your beers end up being a little bit higher, you might need to recalibrate your equipment. Well, I mean, I, I got through this one batch of beer using it. Let's let's get let's try to get Sorry. through two Sorry. before we start talking about three or four Sorry. down I'm the road. Sorry, yes. Although so here's, I break. here's the irony in the entire thing is this beer could have been six point eight the entire time you've been brewing it. You don't really know because you never use a great the point. <laughs> This is a great point. Because who knows if I actually used it the last time I brewed. Yeah, which brings me to my point of that. It may be all of your, if you're all your beers, uh, you have not done hydrometer readings on, they all might be a point higher. This is a good point. I did an interesting side note. I'm glad point, we were actually. re-recording. I, I saw a very cool uh, tool that it's a little expensive, but you guys might have seen or heard about them or maybe even have floating one, hydrometer. A, a what? A floating hydrometer. Yeah, that you put it. in there while you're fermenting. It's like a Bluetooth uh, yep. thing. And you get yeah, all these yeah, readings yeah. on your phone. I'm going, what yeah. the heck is this cool thing? Yeah. That's so, on the Amazon wish list. It's, it's, yeah. it, to me, that, that comes off as like, it's definitely a fun gadget. That's not like something that is 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 needed. But it, it is it is nice because it, especially if you do closed transfer, if you're, if, you're, if you're fermenting in a keg and you then are going to transfer it close transfer to another keg without, you know, to, uh, um, to basically negate any oxygen, uh, which, you know, exposure, which is, you know, not a friend of, of, of the home brewer. Uh, that's a great thing because then you don't have to open up your keg, uh, to find out what you mean the your gravity fermenter? is. That's what I'm saying. If you're fermenting in a keg, you don't have to open up oh, your true, keg. Oh, yeah, in a keg, yes. Because then once it's ready, then you connect it to another keg from the output into the other input, and the beer transfers into that, and you don't have oxygen exposure. So things like that, uh, it is kind of a, a cool gadget uh, for a home brewer. Not necessary, but if you want to limit uh, oxygen exposure, that is something that you can totally do. Yeah, and just I've never cool fermented toy. in a keg. So. Yeah, that too. I've never yeah. fermented I mean, in a keg either. So, um. uh, I, uh, Mike, and I have, and uh, we <laughs> we did the cider. Do you remember when we went to the Great Lakes Brewfest uh, and we poured beer there? Brandon? Yes. Do you remember that cider we also brought yep. with us? Yeah. That we were drinking. Remember how a whole bunch of sludge kept coming out? Yes. That's oh. because we fermented in that keg and didn't transfer it to another keg. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> but the sludge was only during the first couple, like first pour. You had to pour out how much sludge, and then you'd get the actual hard cider. But yeah, those those the the floating hydrometer is super cool, and closed transfer is something that I am looking uh, to do this year. So we can talk about that as well. Um, but I did I did want to go back to Clark your actual beer and and the, the what what we actually thought about it. We don't think it's mud. Um, I think it's really good. Uh, it, it it as soon as I like poured it and smelled it it's very citrusy and fruity um and it was the color of it you i know you said you know originally uh when we recorded yesterday that it was you thought it was going to be dark but when you know you look at actual ipas they are a little bit of that like amberish caramely looking color sure. and it's it's a really nice beer. It's really good. It, it's citrusy. It's piney. It's not so much punchy in the face bitterness. Uh, you know, we've been drinking a lot of, you know, juicy, hazy IPAs. And I think we discussed on maybe the Maltese or one of the episodes, the other episodes, it might have been even me who I wanted to revisit, you know, like the traditional West Coast IPA style. Uh, and that kind of, your beer kind of hits that with it not being totally west coast of being that that piney bitterness but you get that cit uh citrusness with it as well that i really liked and i i enjoyed it there was another thing about it that i liked which there was like this i think i said candied fruit yesterday 
Yes. And the more I thought about it, it, it not like, I don't want it to be to to be perceived as like coinly sweet, but there was a sweetness. And you'd said you'd only because it was a smaller batch, you pitched half of the yeast packet, correct? I meant to pitch half the yeast packet and probably went yeah. a little over. So it was would, probably would more even at 70%. Yeah, it might have been. And I think we I, I mentioned that. And then maybe it was under pitch, which is why it was sweeter. But you ended up with higher alcohol. Right. So since you don't take regular hydrometer uh, readings, we don't know if your equipment is actually calibrated correctly to make an assumption. It doesn't matter. We'll never know. Right? That's, Who cares? that's the magic of, of my brew house. Yeah. My plan is that one day we will know. I'm going to make it happen, baby. I'm going to make it happen. But your beer was delicious, and I really enjoyed it. Well, thank you. Yeah, the, Glad you guys we talked about it, too, was the, the fact that it's, you know, being a zombie dust clone, per se. Um, you know, we got into the conversation of zombie dust is actually categorized as a pale ale. And, right, which is yeah. weird. You know, that the first time I had zombie dust you know years ago i remember having it and i was like oh this is a really good ipa and i had always just assumed it was an ipa until i actually looked and i'm like how the hell is this classified as a pal ale yeah. um and then and again i don't know and clark you may know like the 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 hop bill that goes in there like how much of what hops are tick you know in like a five gallon batch um citra 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 yeah i mean but that's like it's it's, it's like, one of, the, like one of the first popular beers for at least us here in the Midwest that really embraced Citra and, yeah. and, and at least around the time when we started, you know, uh, Clark, you and I, Brandon, you, you, you started uh, your, your journey into craft beer a little bit sooner than, than we have. Um, but I feel like Citra, you know, has become this, that like hop that everybody uses. Like I still love Citra. I think Citra is a great, universal hop as much as you know in the the late 80s early 90s west coast brewers thought like simcoe and cascade were like the hops to use citra yeah. i feel like has become that just kind of all around it, especially for home brewers oh yeah, yeah I, I feel like i use citra all the time when i started brewing and i feel like i'd gotten away with that i'd gotten away from that in the past few years and I think that's why I've enjoyed this batch of fudgy dust a little bit more than I thought, just because it did get back to kind of my early love for Citra. So it's been nice to revisit that. And Yeah, and I think that's probably one of the reasons I thoroughly enjoyed it is because I haven't had zombie. I would probably say it's been over a year since I've had zombie dust. I don't think I can, can recall having it at all last year. And, you know, most of the time... You know, when I, you know, especially during this pandemic, when we've been going out looking for things There's a pandemic going on the show, it's currently still going on. Yes. No, two days left. Two, two days. <laughs> yeah. Two days left on the pandemic. Um, end of dry January, end of the pandemic. Woo! So, I mean, I've been, we've been purposely seeking out things that we probably haven't had before or haven't, you know, um, well, yeah, no, I guess specifically haven't had before because we want to you know, talk about these styles or talk about these types, you know, these, you know, different breweries. Um, and I don't think I've had much with Citra in it in the past, you know, year or so. Um, and it, it just reminds me of how much I've loved beers that have Citra in it. Like, yeah, that I, can't, just, I can't get away from it. I, I like yeah. every time I think I'm going to brew something, <clears throat> which is why the, the blonde, uh, the smash beers I've been doing, <clears throat> I have not done Citra. I did Cascade and El Dorado and even my hop water with Centennial. And the next hop water I'm going to do is Lemon Drop. I purposefully, not, I, there's a couple of times where I'm like, I'm just grab some Citra. Just grab some Citra and do some uh, Citra hop water. But I use it so much in my beers that it's, it, I just want to, especially in my hazy beers, Citra is like the first hop I go to just because it's tried and true for me that and uh amarillo i love those two hops amarillo has always been one of my favorite hops because it has a like citrusy grapefruity quality to it i think the smooth sailing pale ale that we did uh for the brew club that we added the grapefruit juice to was i think citra and amarillo but <clears throat> yeah i think i did citra is definitely a, a huge hop that is is very popular and, and very common uh especially amongst home brewers and those hazy IPAs. It would be nice for us to maybe do an after the final pour um, or a Friday feature where we all have uh, some zombie dust and can discuss that uh, just to revisit it and do a short, uh, 
Why not? Review of it. You know, I mean, and people, people all around the country, uh, craft beer drinkers are now, I mean, they're not now, but they have been familiar with zombie dust because zombie dust was such a highly sought after beer after, you know, when it, not after a while, but when it was released because it used to be just a release here and there. And now it's something that's readily available all the time. I love it. Let's do it. And maybe we can crack open some fudgy dust as well to compare it, see how it, see how it differs, see how it, you know, has. Yeah. See, and that's, I didn't think of that. I thought of that. Like as we went to record yesterday, I was like, man, I should have just picked up a six pack of zombie dust just to do a side by side. I've seen um, it recently and I thought about grabbing some just because Clark had brewed the fudgy dust, but I did I not saw grab. a new, so I think it was at Jewel today. Um, I saw a new three Floyd's beard that I have never heard of before. And I looked at it and I was like, I should buy that maybe next weekend. Um, cause I'm still trying to quote unquote, my dry January is officially ending on Thursday. Um, Hopslamania. Yes. Oh, um, can I interject there? I saw, did uh, I, I saw how many calories are in a hop slam today? Do you want to know? Yeah, I do actually. So it's I know like two or three hundred calories. How much I can't it's three hundred calories per twelve ounces. Okay, I'm okay, like, okay. oh boy. So you guys want to know how many is in a bourbon county? lunch and dinner? Like five hundred, seven hundred thousand. Yeah. yeah, it's like it's like five hundred and thirty calories or something in a bourbon county. So no wonder. Yeah, that's that's why like doing dry January and being like, oh, okay, I'm going to look at what my calorie intake, so to speak, is, uh, you know, on a daily basis, which makes more sense for me, which is why I've, 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 uh, you know, dropped a couple of LBs, very happy about that. And so I'm not so like gung ho about like, yeah, we're going to eat all this, this, whatever, and make this giant, uh, fattening high calorie dish. And then I'm going to pair it with these delicious beers after and before and, and, and during. And now throughout the day, I'm like, Okay, so I'm going to have this for breakfast. I've been eating uh, multigrain Cheerios with some almond milk. Uh, very delicious, in case you guys want to know. About 170 calories if you do uh, the measurements there. Lunch is very light as well. And then dinner is also the same thing. So that at night I could be like, hmm, I think I shall have two beers tonight, which would be about 300 calories, and I'm still where I need to be. You have so multigrain Cheerios for uh, dinner? With all the milk? I should do that. Actually, <laughs> ooh, good idea. No, I, I just, honestly, for the last, like, uh, since I think mid December, that's what I've been eating is having uh, multi. Well, I did switch it up to the new cinnamon Cheerios because um, it's lower in calories, uh, and which is weird for you know you'd think multi grain would be better, but the cinnamon Cheerios are really good, and I use unsweetened vanilla almond milk, uh, which has a very reminiscent flavor of just regular milk, and it's twenty cal or thirty calories for a cup of of, of that as opposed to the hundred and thirty calories to milk. This podcast is not sponsored by General Mills. <laughs> yes, yeah, we're going to get Goose Island. We're going to get General Mills. It's all coming up, baby. I've been having eggs, eggs and bacon every day for. <laughs> oh, oh, no, my, you're doing the keto. You're on keto. My, okay. My, no, I'm not. Well, so I'm not doing keto, but my it's funny because I had told my doctor like a year and a half ago that I was he's like, what do you have for breakfast? I'm like, I don't know, yogurt. And he's like, he's like, get rid of the fucking yogurt. I was like, OK. <laughs> Six or, um he's like you need protein eat protein for breakfast i'm like like eggs he's like yes eggs you know maybe not bacon every day but you know get some eggs or egg whites something like that so i've been doing that like literally almost every day since uh the beginning of this month and i'm down almost 20 pounds so do we do nice i'm down 10 so i got that going for me hey down is down that's all that matters clark what about you you're looking fit with uh, your, lately. I'm, I'm, no, I'm not down now, but I was down last year. So I've, I've held held strong. That's good. That's all that matters. It's amazing yeah, what is, diet and exercise does. It's crazy. You didn't lose any of those uh, Rona LBs? Uh, I did, but then I started to get my taste back so I could taste the beer. And I was like, ooh, beer's good. Let's keep drinking it because I missed out for two weeks. <laughs> uh, well, well played. Well played. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and on that, that's that that's my fear because as my birthday is coming up this weekend, I'm like, please God, don't let me have the Rona. I was saving that Bourbon County anniversary for Saturday. But anyways, this isn't you can't, the you can't move your let's move your birthday. Just push it a couple of days. <laughs> no, okay. Well, push it till after the pandemic. Uh, but this isn't the fitness hour. This is the malting hour, right? Talking about and beer. speaking of Tony, Tony made a beer too. 
I did. That's what I wanted to get to. That was, that was trying to transition. Uh, I did. Uh, so anyways, we'll, we'll, we'll real quick for you to mind. Clark, your beer is delicious. It's very good. Um, looking forward to when you make it again. And I would like a growler that I can uh, uh, just consume, you know. A, and a, full, a full growler. A full growler <laughs> in one sitting, you know, a five and a half uh, pints of beer there. Do you, What is the ratio of foam to beer that you'd prefer in that growler? I would like just a little bit of head. Okay. So I'd like 95% beer. Got it. 5%. I'll make notes. Yeah, Speaking of growlers, to, wait, no, there it is. I was like, does one of you guys still have one of my other growlers? And I just saw it. I like I've got a oh, clip from Clark right now, and that's about it. Uh, anyway, so back to the beers. I also did a beer that I'm having a little bit more of. It was my first I attempt know. at a at a Goza, and um, I was inspired by Off Colors Beer for Tacos, um, I've also just recently tried, uh, beer for burgers. So the, so the beer for tacos is a, a lime and sea salt goza, uh, meant to have with tacos. And the other ones I've tried were beer for burgers, which is like the, the Bach beer that is blended with a barrel aged lager, which is also very good. And then beer for pizza, which I'm going to save that for another time. I, I, the, the jury is still out. I did try some of it. Not sure how I feel about it, so I, I don't feel like giving a full uh, report on that. What but, is there something special in that one? So, like the beer for tacos is like the lime and salt. Is mm-hmm. there something? It's supposed some to mimic like Pepsi, Pepsi or Cola, yeah, like, like flavor, having cherry right? Coke. Yeah, and so oh, I think really? I didn't. Oh, yeah, I, I don't think I went into that. It should be like RC Cola. <laughs> cherry RC, even better. Um, I don't think I went. I don't, I don't think I, 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 not that I don't think, I know that I didn't go into that beer thinking that I saw all the flavors. I'm like, Ooh, that sounds fun. And then I took a sip and uh, right now I'm in the mindset of, am I losing taste and smell? Because I'm worried I, I, I might've been, you know, uh, exposed to corona <laughs> exposed. <laughs> uh, that I just didn't enjoy it. And I, I, I tried to force myself halfway through it and I said, I'm not going to force this anymore. I'm just going to go ahead and, and call it a day and, and give it some time and go back to it again. Uh, not the particular pour, but uh, the actual beer that I have. Um, but yeah, so this uh, particular beer that I brewed back to that is a uh, Goza that I made. It's um, yeah, Goza is, I think, I think it's um, for this actual recipe. Hold on. Let me pull it up real quick. I did, yeah, forty four percent pale malt, forty four percent wheat malt, and then eleven percent acid malt. And I used uh, Motuika hops because those are known for being lime and, and lemony, which I thought would be very nice for this beer. I put it at the last eight minutes of the the boil, so it's only ten IBUs. And then I zested a lime into it, fermented it with regular uh, Saf Ale uh, USO five dry yeast, and I then I squeeze six limes which gave me about six ounces of lime juice which i didn't know that each lime has about an ounce of juice in it good to know and then i added 0.24 anywhere between my scale doesn't do you know it just says 0.2 so when i first pouring it i was like oh 0.1 0.2 i kept adding a little bit then once it got to 0.3 like i took a pinch and a half out of it and i'm like that's probably 2.5 so the salt went in there um so yeah, so this was my first attempt. What did you guys think of it yesterday? So my my first question is what um when did you add the the lime juice? Mm-hmm. The lime you juice went, went uh during a kegging. Okay. Uh, and then didn't you zest too? Yeah, the zest went I zested like three or four limes and it got to the point like I had football on, I was in the basement just zesting the shit out of stuff uh, the stuff limes and just going at it and uh it got to the point where i was like "Ooh, i'm like pulling off peel at this point i should really pay attention to how i'm zesting this um and the recipe that i was referencing said i needed about an ounce of lime zest that's a lot of lime zest uh because all the zest i pulled from the five four or five limes that i did it didn't even register yet on my scale and i'm like this looks like it's enough and sure enough like when I transferred the beer from my kettle into the bucket, I smelled lime, which makes sense because I did it a flame out. Uh, and then when I opened it up after it was done fermenting to take a gravity uh, reading, all I smelled was lime. And I, when I took a little, I took a sip of it to try it as well. Um, I tasted 
you know, a little bit of that lime zest. So I was like, man, the, this, that was probably the perfect amount because all those oils from the, the, the zest and the peel just come out into, that's where you get most of that lime flavor from. Wait, so maybe, maybe I misunderstood or misheard. So when you use the lime peel at kegging or. So the lime zest and, and then like the, the little peel uh, okay. bits from the lime went in at the end of the boil. The gotcha. lime juice okay. went in at the kegging. Gotcha. Okay. Because all those oils were extracted because of the heat, and then the juice itself just lends, you know, the actual flavor to the beer. I don't know why I thought when you were when you're getting ready to keg it that you were throwing lime zest back in there, but yeah, that wouldn't yeah, yeah. that wouldn't be that wouldn't be good okay. for uh, the keg. You know, some, talking some, about getting stuck in the yeah, wild, yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, and some wild yeast would probably uh, find its way into this beer, so it didn't want that. But um, yeah, so the, the the lime juice and salt went in there during uh, I poured it at the bottom of the keg, um, and actually s- some of the sea salt didn't dissolve uh, perfectly. So I know what I'm going to do next time uh, because the star Sam foam snake that was coming out of my keg as I was filling it uh, and I, I went and sealed it. I noticed these little crystals on top of my keg and I was like, Oh, there's some of the salt. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, you know, if I overshot the 0.25 ounces, you know, I overshot it. But uh, anyways, what did you guys think of uh, the beer? I was, uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of your beer and I, I, it might be the favorite one I've had of yours uh, in the past few years. Where's the applause, Brandon? Throw the uh, applause uh, sound effect in there hooray, real quick. Hooray, hooray, yay. No, 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 no. Brandon's got work. Brandon, work. God bless it. Okay, well, you'll have to just okay. use my congratulations uh, audio that I just created. But no, um, and, and what I like about it, what I liked about it when I was drinking it was you pick the glass up to your nose, you get the lime citrus, but then you take that sip and... There's that hit of salt. There we go. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Very well done, sir. Very well done. Might be my favorite. Might be my favorite. But no, it's kind of a two part two part drinking experience. I, I guess you could say. Um, there you go. You can trademark that. Mm. Uh, you get the lime I'll aroma. The, I'll change the, the description on Untapped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get the limey, citrusy aroma on the nose, and then you you take that sip, and oh yeah, there's some nice salt there, and it reminds me of a delicious margarita and i love tons of salt in my margaritas so it was uh very well done and it's very well balanced too all at the same time where you're getting those those two different things this would be an excellent uh chaser to a shot of tequila Mm. let's do it it. maybe i'll do that on my birthday i've got like people people have given me bottles of tequila i'm not a huge fan of tequila i don't dislike tequila but i don't like see like if i if someone offers me tequila, sure, maybe I'll have it, but I'm not like, oh, I just need to have tequila around the house because, man, me and my tequila. Uh, but I have like some, I have like two like nice bottles of tequila. That that sounds like a fun idea. I did think about that uh, with this beer that it'd be fun to get some type of not like toasted oak chip, but maybe like a French oak chip to soak it in tequila and add just a very small amount to the fermenter after soaking those chips in tequila and then add that also to the beer to kind of get that, you know, margarita (laughs) barrel aged tequila vibe. I think that would actually work out really well. Um, And again, like if you didn't want to do this in a larger scale, you could always, you know, on your next one gallon batch, you know, project kind of see, how that kind of plays out because I, I, I mean, I don't see any reason why that that wouldn't be kind of phenomenal. So thanks. Um, but so to back to this beer or to the, the current state of this beer, the thing I said yesterday too, and it's still today when I take, when I smell it, it's the aroma reminds me of like a fresca or something like that. And then you get that kind of earthiness that comes in from the salt. Um, and the salt is so subtle, but it's, perfect because you get that lime and then again when i was when i just finished uh, the little bit that i had left you know you get that you taste the salt on the back of your tongue you get that little bit of like sour acidity you know from a goes that just kind of like lingers there for a bit and uh, it, it's in no way overpowering and um everything just plays so well together and i i know i mentioned it yesterday too that the carbonation on it was perfect i thought it made it for a very pleasant and easy drinking beer that uh again would be a good you know hot summer day or um ooh, cinco de mayo there you go like hey (laughs) oh nice it'll go you might have to brew it again for that (laughs) 
I'll go with my Macarena beer. My, uh, there you go. Your song uh, <laughs> title, beers. Yeah, keep going with it. Sat by the ocean. Uh, well, thank you guys. I appreciate that. Uh, I, I would, I would, uh, and I'm humbled by it. Thank you. I appreciate you guys that you you like it so much. Um, I was uh, pretty proud of this beer, um, and I think that my only critique of it, and it, it's nice to hear that you guys think otherwise. And, and Mike said the same thing that um, some of the complaints about American Gozas are that they're too salty, and I personally would have liked a little bit more salt to this, um, but that's just my palate. And if, you know, three out of four of us think that the salt is, is where it should be, or it's, it's nice, then, you know, I'm just going to keep it where it's at and, and go, go with it. Yeah. But you know what, that, that comment is all relative because I'm tasting it and I like it. That doesn't mean that if there was more salt, I would taste it and dislike it. You know, I may enjoy it just as much. Yeah, on, on, my, on my side, I'm going, oh, yeah, definitely try some more salt. I'd, I'd like to see how that tastes because oh, okay. I think cool. I'd, I'd enjoy it. So I'll you know. do that. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll go to 0.3 ounces next time, huh? I say throw it like, in and see what yeah. makes it into the keg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, you know, dissolve it more. Yeah, next right. <laughs> Jeez. Well, yeah. Well, thanks, guys. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way this beer turned out. And I think, um, <clears throat> I don't know if I'll brew it again soon because uh, I've got a sour beer that <laughs> still needs a boil. Didn't do that yesterday. Um, that uh, I'll definitely, this might become a springtime. Maybe, you know, do around Cinco de Mayo. we will do around May or, you know, uh, June when it gets a little bit warmer out. And uh, I'll up the salt a little bit. And it'll be a nice, uh, as you said, uh, hot, hot or warmer weather uh, beer. So uh, something nice to sit in the yard and bask in the sunshine instead of shoveling inches upon inches of snow into one giant mound that is a fail, uh, failed sled um, uh, hill for my nephew, because that's what I tried. <laughs> I tried. I tried. He was not having it. It was it was it went down, hit a curve. <clears throat> that was it, baby. <laughs> I started trying to build a fort for Benjamin and he was not having it like I bought. Uh, a block a snow block builder on um amazon or whatever and i was literally i built pretty sizable walls sort of building up like on the side of our house and he was just building a wall real nice he was just standing well i was gonna and i was gonna start going around and like you know make it like a fortress and he was just staring at it and then he was just like whatever started running down the street um (laughs) last night after yeah i was like see a kid he's gonna go sketching on some cars you know in the snow um when I came back out to shovel after uh, we had recorded yesterday, I went out in front and the snow, the weight of the snow just took the whole thing down. And I, oh, then I had to shovel that up because it was right in the walkway. I was like, oh, oh come on. Geez. <laughs> <laughs> Whoopsie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Clark, you, you, you and uh, your family look like you guys had some fun in the back. Yeah, we had a good uh, snow day. Big, big, nice snowman, hockey player snowman. Uh, what else? We, we did a little brick wall fortress kind of thing. Not as official. I had a fancy cardboard box that I used for that, which worked fairly mm. well, surprisingly. And a uh, nice little couple tunnels, you know, so we were having fun. It was an old fashioned snow day, which uh, hadn't really had in a while. We were just out there having a great time. Yeah, I feel like we were really uh, lucky for the winter that we've had so far, and it was nice to get a whole bunch of snow. I'm not looking forward to this weekend where they said it'll be three degrees during the day and negative seven at night, just in time for the Super Bowl. Yeah, and all this snow is just going to turn to ice and just make driving and everything else much more. I also more just heard fun. that it might snow again, too. Uh, Thursday. Yeah, well, that Thursday. Too. Thursday, it's going to snow. It's going to be great. Well, it's some it's mix, so we could get a little rain, a little snow, and a little ice everywhere for the next three weeks, so that'll be fun. Well, it sounds like the perfect opportunity for maybe the three of us to maybe record an after the final pour of the cinnamon roll stout. I don't know. I'm just saying that, that we haven't really, uh, Brandon, you'll be done with your dry January. Of course, I will not be able to be the one making the delivery. So I'm going to need one of you guys to go ahead and, and, and man that and just leave a beer by my back door. Uh, but I would like to revisit the cinnamon. Well, not re, well, Brandon, you and I revisit, but finally uh, discuss this beer yeah. on the podcast. Uh, and let, maybe um, you'll let me try it this time. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, you've talked well, about it 60 times and I'm just sitting here like, yeah, that's it. great, guys. Yeah. Real cool. We're, we're giving it a strong consideration. Yeah. Okay. There's no we'll take an official well, vote later. No, but, definitely. Yeah, if you need to Venmo something to you just to kind of sweeten the pot, just uh, let me know. Money. To, this beer is too good for that. Okay, I gotta be um, <laughs> but yeah, so well, I know. Well, my thought was, too, uh, depending on how everything turns out, um, 
hopefully you're feeling okay on Thursday, Tony. Uh, Fingers so crossed, I know, baby. Fingers crossed. <laughs> um, so I, I know we had discussed um, participating in that event uh, related yes. to OpSlam and then doing mm-hmm. an episode after that to chat about that. Um, it would be an appropriate time to do an after the final four mm. at that time. I am free that Thursday. As am I. This, this could be an off mic conversation too. I think we're going <laughs> to. I mean, we're already doing something. So yeah, just, yeah, that's fine. Hold on. I'm checking yeah. my calendar. Hold, yeah, hold, oh, hold well, on for that. We're going to, okay. we're going to say goodbye to everybody right now. Oh, uh, you don't want to talk about that. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. We'll figure that out. Uh, anyways, um, Brandon, we're looking forward to trying your triple. Uh, very excited. Glad you're being very patient with it. We've, we've learned some patience with uh, the stout and I still actually, I'm kegging the one gallon of our stout that I made with uh, the tincture this week, probably tomorrow. I'm adding my vanilla tincture to it. I've got the oak chip sitting in it. If all of that works out as I burp, as I'm talking to you guys, I should be able to give you guys some of that as well, but I need bottle caps. I'm on a bottle caps. Um, I'll check. I might have some. <clears throat> Someone's got bottle caps. I can give you guys both a that that would be a fun thing to try too. You guys can try that for my birthday. My birthday beer is what I'm making. That'd that be fun. Stout. Sounds good to me. <clears throat> All right. Well, anyways, uh Brandon, looking forward to trying your beer. We'll we'll have that on another episode. Uh Clark, your uh fudgy dust um IPA was very good. And I will say that my Gozo was also very good. I think it was a successful first brew of 2021 for all three of us um just because brandon your beer is just kicking ass and you hit numbers and so i, I can only imagine it's going to taste good so I, I yeah fingers crossed that nothing you know nothing changes in how well it's went i gone. sprinkled some covid in it uh, at some point while you weren't home so awesome. that, could, that could change everything <clears throat> anyways so uh brandon i love you man love you too man clark i appreciate you and I Damn appreciate it. both of you. <laughs> yes. Got Thanks it. for taking that away from me. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I was going to last, you know, last time we recorded this, I was setting it up differently. And then I was mm. like, how can I stick it to Clark? I'm yeah, going to take really got me this time saying and use it right, against him. right in the gonads. Mm-hmm. Bam. So good luck finding a new catchphrase, baby. Mm. I'll work on it. Working on <laughs> it. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. That would have been a good time for uh, Yep. Real simple. <laughs> yep. I know. Yeah, well, good. <laughs> we're learning. We're learning. All right. We're All learning, right. I guess. <laughs> well, uh, sorry, everybody, for a day late, but we're not a dollar short because we're still paying for our services. Thanks for listening to the Melting Hour. <laughs> that's, that's the best Goodbye. I can Bye, sorry, Bye everyone. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> This has been The Malting Hour. Be sure to follow us on all social media by searching The Malting Hour and at themaltinghour.com. You can also follow us on social media platforms individually. Brandon can be found on Instagram as bmdub81, on Twitter, bdub81, on untapped, bdub drinks beer. Tony can be found on Instagram and untapped under Ace of Phelps Chicago, on Twitter, the Ace of Phelps Chicago. Clark can be found as Clarkowski on all three. Be sure to subscribe, like, and rate the show on your preferred podcast listening platform. Until next time, cheers from all of us at the Malting Hour.